tugging machine and they're firing yeah. at 50 miles an hour. I think I, I, apparently it's coming from his kid's hand.
online. Um, I'd like to start the meeting. Let's start by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. <clears throat> um, I'd like to uh, do the roll call. Um, president here, Vice President Mike is in here. Treasurer Jesse is in here. Baseball Commissioner here. Secretary is in here. Softball Commissioner here. Member at large. Justin. Present. Member at large, Dave. Here. Um, did I miss anybody? Okay. Um, the very first thing I want to do is uh, um, appoint the next member at large. Um, I talked to a couple people, and uh, we had um, a couple of people interested. Um, I selected, uh, or I'm a, I want to appoint um, Sky. He's uh, been involved. He's been helping out, even though he wasn't on the board, as if he was on the board. Um, I think he's going to be a great asset to the league. And uh, I'd like to appoint him as the uh, third member at large. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Um, I know appointments don't generally do that, but I just want to make sure everybody was on the same same uh, page. Sky, you want to come up and take the end? So now remember, at large is our bookends. Um, the first thing we have is uh, the previous minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read over the previous minutes? Anybody have any questions about them? No questions? All right. Um, I'd like to make a motion to vote in the previous minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Um, I need someone to do a second, too. When I get ready. I'm second. forgetting about the second. Okay, I got you. Right. you got me. Cool. Um, we're going to do the president's report. Um, the things I'm going to talk about are uh, we got our first Cooperstown ticket. We're super excited about that. Um, Yay, that's, that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. Um, we've always had the problem, and Ed talked to me about this. He was actually the one that was pushing me to go after it. Um, it. It keeps people at our park, and it actually brings people to our park because that's a huge deal from, like, 10-year-old to 12-year-old. Everybody wants to go to a park that has that ticket. It's, that's how we've lost kids and got them back when they're 13 is because we didn't have the ticket. We want to keep them here. We want to get their siblings. We want to get everybody coming. Um, a couple of things I'll mention in new um, We've discussed it among the travel. Um, we have four travel baseball teams that I need the rosters for. I need them emailed to me or Brandon. We need them pretty quick. They were supposed to have already been in. Um, you're repping Royal Palm Beach. We've already talked about that. We're going to take care of your registration. I just need the rosters to make sure we get them to the village so they know that we're giving them the right amount. Plus, they need to know everybody involved, too. That's managers, coaches, and players. We also have four softball teams. Same scenario. This is for the baseball commissioner, softball commissioner. Um, I need their rosters. I know Ed already has his in. I need the rosters from the other two. Is not is it Mike supposed to do the other travel? He's he's not here. No, I see. Um, so I need the other. Yes, he normally is. I need the I need all three rosters. Um, so we can get them in for softball too. Um, I would also like uh, Amy to come up with with Mike's help. Um. If there's anything that is comparable or something that we can work towards that is a Cooperstown for softball, like a big event every year that we can focus on and get 
you know, get the same push on the softball side that we have on the baseball side, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm looking to give as much help to softball as I give to baseball. You know, I want everything to blow up out here like it, it appears to be doing. Um, we're going to be getting, the last thing I want to go over real quick is we're getting the coaching corner on our website. It's going to be set up and up and going. I would like to get that functioning so one, the village knows who our coaches are in case they're out there and we're not. They, they know who's supposed to be there and who's not supposed to be there. Um, if we have coaches coming to a specific team and working with their team, that's okay. If they are giving individual lessons at our park, they have to be part of our coach's corner, baseball and softball. Um, right now we have Jose for batting. Um, Ronald, Ron Pena just came in for pitching. Um, I'm trying to get us catching so we can have that in baseball. And then I know Ed, Ed is going to be on our coach's corner for softball, and I know Scott still has his, him, him and him, his girls giving lessons for softball. And I need anybody else that is interested in that coming through you and getting approval from the board. Yeah, but you're in softball now. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and they're on the coach's corner. It's not, you know, they're going to list, we're going to get like a little resume from them. So they'll get specific that you can, you can, this is going to sound weird. You can go either way. You know what I mean? You can, it'll work out for you. Is there an age that they have to be? To do? To give lessons? No, no. They just have to have a uh, resume and it looks like it makes sense. Um, that's what I got for the president's report. We're, uh, we're dealing with growth issues on the uh, baseballs with the back orders and everything else. I'm going to try to get a handle on that. And as far as this season, concessions firing off. We got baseball. It's awesome to go out there when the baseball games are going, especially on a Saturday. It, it, it just makes you feel good. Um, that's what I got for the president's meeting. So vice president isn't here. Vice president's report. I hope I covered what he might have been thinking about talking about. Um, treasurer's report, well, I'll have her email everybody. The information we generally get from her is our balances. I'll make sure Brandon's included in that. Um, baseball commissioner's report. Um, I don't really have a ton of stuff. I mean, the, the se <clears throat> season's kind of in full swing. Um, I would agree that the on weekends it's it's nice right now because we've got you know a lot of the uh, with, with, you know with the travel teams playing and the fact that there's four we got games going on like all day long you know so Rex over and like I had a game at two o'clock on Saturday last week um, so the park's full like from you know dusk to dawn um, which is good um, I know we're trying to do some things with um, with some concessions, right, for travel and, and having that be kind of part of their, um, you know, their funds for some of those days like Sundays because yeah. we had a Sunday the other day where we had, like, every team playing. So, again, the park was kind of full. And, um, you know, all those people coming in looking for simple stuff. It's not like we need to – I mean, Mike actually busted out the grill and everything. But even if we just had snack foods and drinks, right, um, but I think that's a good way to, to get some uh, – some proceeds to those travel teams, especially with the whole Cooperstown thing going on. Um, so I think, you know, things are in full swing. It was definitely crazy and busy at the beginning of the season, but I think things are, are settled in now. Um, I know we had some snafus with the acreage um, scheduling of games because I think they, they gave us a schedule and I think they changed around some times. Um, and they thought they sent us the changes, but I never saw anything. So I got out of the middle. So I got out of the middle of it and just got him directly in touch with Jesse. Um, and I think they've squared all that away. But I knew there were some times that were off or, or something uh, initially. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, softball commissioner. Not, not a lot to report. Rec uh, seems to be doing pretty well. I think overall our coaches involved is going a little smoother than I've watched it go in the past as far as everybody working together um, and, and coordinating because I know some of our teams were having to move a lot of players because we, we have exactly enough to play so 
that seems to be working out well. Um, travel, um, the league that we're in is going well. I haven't I haven't heard much of the other two teams yet, so we'll, we'll possibly get updates there. But um, overall, everything seems to be going well. We are just with baseball. If there's times and dates, Tony, that you all can't cover concession things, we're looking to do something similar to raise some funds for our team. And anybody that wants to help do those things can jump in. We're also um, looking to open up the concession at Barron, just keeping it light and easy to, to start making some money um, to help support the girls and, and the costs that we're occurring. Um, I think that's it. I do have, I sent it though, about the Farron fields. Do you want me to wait on that? Yeah, we can. See, that's okay. an exhibit that uh, um, Secretary's report, she's not here. Um, village report. Um, pretty much um, going off the last meeting still, Jesse's not here, so um, quarterly reports um, are the um, CPA, CPA review, and tax returns. Um, those are both due still. And, um, CPA review? Yeah, CPA review. And tax returns. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll jump on that. And then the, um, once you get the, um, travel team rosters, get those over to me. Um, that way we'll just have those on file. But um. I believe the travel teams are, are established, so I shouldn't have a problem getting those this week. Okay. I'll agree with that. Yeah, that should. It, it'll come fast now. Okay. Um, other than that, nothing else to report right now? Okay. Um, or, uh, Baseball travel coordinator isn't here. I wanted to ask softball. Do you have any Scott? Did you want to talk about anything for travel? If you do, you got to come up to the mic right there. And make sure it's off. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Green lights on right here. All right. It's on. Yep. All right. Um, from a from a travel softball standpoint, uh. I think all three teams are moving uh, moving on well. The 12s and 14s have been working out of Farron. I think the 10s have been mostly working out of um, out of the Willows. Uh, there are a few field conditions. I don't know if this is the right time to bring those up or not. Um, of concern. Um, it's going to come up in new business. It'll come up in new business. Okay. I Pro didn't know the procedure. I I'd asked ahead of time for a procedure yeah. level outline, yeah. so I knew where to present that. Um, as far as rosters are concerned, I'll make sure. Um, I'll talk to all the coaches um, who have turned one in and make sure that those rosters are turned in by the end of this week. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I like. My favor. Uh, business. Opening day, I really <clears throat> don't have anything to say about either one of those. We we brought Sky up today, and uh, Amy was last meeting, so I, that's our nine positions. Um, now these appointed positions, just so everybody knows, every appointed position um, is up for election in the very next cycle. So if you guys don't like what you're doing, you know you got six months, five months. You know, and then you get a chance to either or keep going. So that's the good thing about it. Um, once you're appointed, it's two years. All right. Um, I think that's it for old business, unless somebody remembers something that I'm missing from last meeting. All right. Let's go to a new business. Um, I want to start with. Um, we. I want to start with with Cooperstown. Um, the. Uh, Things we were mentioning, um, Tony brought some up. I, I had some ideas I wanted to run by everybody real quick, so you're thinking about them moving forward. Um, we have time. Um, a couple of the things we talked about was I reached out to all of the, uh, the travel teams for baseball. And uh, I suggest we do – I, I First of all, we need to find out if there's anything similar to Cooperstown on the baseball side. You'll let me know everything going on with that. 
but as far as the baseball side, um, all of the younger age groups, the 7, the 9, and the 11, short of their Publixes, you know, because every team does Publixes because they all work, play games monthly and they have tournaments monthly. They have to, you know, uh, support themselves. But as far as the uh, concession, the Sundays, um, the banners, the sponsors, all of that, um, I'm, I'm moving towards getting uh, one sponsorship banner that we may have to reprint, you know, every month before it goes out, like on the first of the month. And it's it's not that much to it's not that much to print it um, because all of the age groups are going to be working for sponsors to help the 12 you get to Cooperstown. So everybody underneath is going to help the team coming up to Cooperstown because they know when 11 gets to 12, they're going to get the same support from the rest of the ages below them and the park. Um, so they'll be, when they're available, they're going to be helping with concessions. They're going to be helping with finance sponsors. They're going to be helping with, you know, everything as far as fundraising. Um, we talked about the, the T-ball concession opening up for the T-ball area and that going strictly for Cooperstown. We talked about softball opening up over at Farron going strictly for softball. Um, depending on how the main concession goes, I got to talk to some of the previous board members that, uh, are very experienced, and they'll let me know if a, a, a percentage of the main concession can go towards Cooperstown and helping out and what we have to keep for next season. Um, tournaments, we can put age groups, you know, and run like a um, 8 and a 10 one, one weekend, and then the next weekend run an 11 and 12, you know what I mean, split them up, and we can put a good group of teams on three or four fields and get a good turnout. Um, and all of that money can go towards Cooperstown, you know. And what I like to do is we're going to form a Cooperstown fund or a bank account, and everything is going to go into that. And what's good about that is if a team works for a couple years and then something happens and they get poached or whatever, the money's the league's money. It's not their money. They can leave, but they're not leaving with the money. They, everybody raised for the Cooperstown. That's not, that's, you know. Um, it's similar to what, the other parks do. Gardens does it and Okahiri does it. Um, that's what I have for new business as far as Cooperstown. Does anybody? What's um, Brandon, what was the lead time on any tournaments again? Uh, 60 days. Was it 60? Okay. Yeah, 60. Because we were, we were tossing that around a little bit. Uh, see if like towards the end of travel season. Yeah, you're looking at 60 days, December, January. Right, which is, which is fine. Right. And we're trying to find, you know, now now we know all of the established tournaments, right, that they play every year. We have those schedules. We don't want to play on the same on the same weekend because those teams are already going to be, you know, committed. So we'll start we'll start looking into that for like really late in the year, right? You know, and um, I know um, Ed might have mentioned it to me when uh, other teams, younger, same age, whatever, find out it's a Cooperstown tournament. A lot of people get involved if they're available right. because everybody wants to help out everybody else's team, knowing they're going to come to their tournament. Yeah, that goes on the flyer. Yeah, that's part of the. Yeah, you know, the it's like a big deal when you put Cooperstown on a tournament. All right. of a sudden, now you get ten teams for each division where you were struggling to get six before you put the word Cooperstown on it because everybody tries to help everybody everybody out. That's the reason why it's um, important and pushed in the past with even fits. You know, I know we tried to put it together too late, but that's the relationship that um, people are talking about. Is parks help parks out, and that's what that's what our yeah, you like know, we're, we're that's where we generate a lot of revenue. Yeah, we're playing in a Okahili Halloween right thing that they have every year. That's for for the Cooper for Cooperstown. Town. Yeah, for them. And so. I mean, that their tournament is so big that they make all of their Cooperstown money for their team, yeah. not the lodging for the parents and all that, but their twenty five, twenty eight grand in that one tournament. And there's no reason why we couldn't run two or three and cover that same amount if we do it by age groups, you know, where we can have enough teams out there per age group. It's the tournament. It's the concessions from right. those weekends. It's Everything from them weekend goes into that Cooper Sound Fund. Right. Um, that's what I have for Cooper Sound. And anybody else can pop in. Any any ideas you got that can help with Cooper Sound? Any, any way you can do it? I don't want this to stumble. You know, this is our first one, so we're doing everything we can to 
make it work, and then it's just going to get easier because we're setting precedence. Well, and this this year's 12U team is a little bit behind the eight ball. Yeah. Because they weren't, you know. We just found out. They don't out. have all that time. This week, we just found like out. My team I mean, does because we have yeah. three years before we yeah. get there. But. And the 11-year-old team has a whole year and a half. Right. So they know they're going through this town. It's, we're get, the 12-year-old's the biggest one we're going to have to help them through. Okay. Yeah, and any ideas, you know, that anybody can come up with that's involved? Okay. Um. Does anybody else have any new business? I mean, I got, yep. I, I'm looking here. Barron Fields. Tickets, Willow's good. Okay, we're at Barron. All right. Barron's Fields for weeks weren't touched. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, all our girls pretty much, that's where we practice. And it's kind of a, a disgrace to them to, you go to the Willows, it's, that's pretty well taken care of. And nobody cares about Barron. That's not right to my daughter. That's not right to their daughters. We, uh, I mean, he, that's the he, way it appears. We, we won state championships. We we went to the World Series. We came in second in the World Series, and we have pretty much a junk field that's not taken care of. And I I, I don't think that's cool to the girls at all. They put in the work. They our girls. Uh, I know Ed's do. I, I haven't seen your 14 U team. I, I know you put work in, but that it's not right for them not to have the same quality that the boys have. And I mean, it's kind of a slap in the face every time we go there. There was for a full week, even days it didn't rain, the same puddle blew up. <laughs> that would not be accepted at Willows and it shouldn't be accepted for, uh, I'm not going to accept it for my kid. Right. I've been here for almost 10 years and I never had to deal with that with my son. But now that I have a daughter who's getting more and more involved, it's just disrespect. I know that's not all you, but or you're not knowing about it. This may be the first you're hearing about this stuff, you know, to the yeah. extreme. Mm -hmm. like it, I mean, it's bad. Like, bad. you know, they, they, they hardly ever touch the field. Okay. And it was at least, what you say, at least two weeks went by and those fields weren't touched. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Got, with well, all that weather, they're bad because they got wet and dry yeah. and wet and yeah. dry yeah. without anything in between. So yeah. they get worse and worse quick. And just to, Ed's getting ready to speak, but just to let you know where we're coming from, most of their practices are at Willows, oh, but, but he's Not speaking Farron. up for Farron. No, my practice is at Farron. Okay. So Soft, softball's pretty much. I've well, had I mean, them some move of them, our travel. We yeah. Yeah. We've been that. we've been doing it at travel at Willows because of the field condition. Okay. Right. Farron. Yes, I can't. Yeah. I can't do that. But I, I'm not necessarily talking about travel. All my rec practices, pretty much all yeah. softball rec practices, yeah. are at Farron. And mm -hmm. baseball. We do baseball over there. Yeah, too. baseball too. Yeah, I just I have some punch list things for it. I mean, they are. I I've called I called you a couple of weeks ago about getting the field dragged and everything, and yeah. and you know it worked out. They did great, but I'll start with field one. One is pitching mounds do not line up with home plate and second base, and they're they're just they're way off. But the bottom line, what you need to do to all the fields. This goes for one, two, and three. Is the only mound that needs to be permanent on those fields is the 43 foot. The 35 and 40 needs to be um, portable because you'll see as you go up in ages when they start striding off the mounds, they'll be in the way. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had a girl at a tournament this weekend hurt her hip because she slid on the 35 foot rubber, not at Farron, but at another park. Mm -hmm. Go figure. That it was supposed to be removed. The tournament director came over and said, but it's a liability. So the the, f the only permanent one is the farthest the farthest distance in softball is 43 feet. 43. When you get up to 14U, that's where you're pitching from. 12U goes, 12U is from 40, 10U down there, 10U is at 35. So those two two mounds, and it, it pretty much needs to be the same. I, I, I like how Willows does it on field one. They have, see, we, we don't do 14U there. They have a 40-foot permanent, and the 35 is portable, and they leave it in a, and they leave it in the um, dugout. Mm -hmm. So when a team does need to adjust, it's right there. They pull up the plugs, save the plugs, of course. That'll be passed on, you know, and then they put in a portable, <coughs> a portable mount. Okay. It works good on Willows. It, it really, that's really the format that needs to be done on all three fields at Farron. Um and everything needs to be realigned, it needs to be, you know, rechecked because it's it's a hot mess. 
Um, field two, they don't even have a 40 foot mound there. That's so, I mean, so anybody that wants to play from 12, you on a field can't. Um, field one, which is the, the non fence field, home plate is in pieces. It's some of it that should be changed immediately. Um, first base doesn't stay in the ground. Anything else on field three? That one's just a hot mess. That one, you know, that one's always been a mess. That one has puddles on it for days when we get a lot of rain. Yeah. I mean, there's just, you can tell there's like, four inches of clay missing from that field. Yeah. You know? and, and all the fields are dragged in a circle. So when it does rain, you got a donut on a pitcher's mound. It's a perfect donut every time it rains. Um, so I, I don't know if they gotta, they got to find a new pattern on how they drag them, probably, or go out there when it rains and take a look at it and take a picture. Um, they can find where all their holes are at. Um, the cage nets, balls are going right through them. There's holes all over them. Um, even the, the hitting nets. nets. Yeah. Talk about the slippery. Yeah. I mean, I just the the um turf, turf mats. Yeah, they got yeah. The balls are going through the fence and going over the fence that's locked, so we can't even <coughs> get to them. We have to send somebody all the way around, or have someone climb the fence because it's locked. covered sprinkler heads yeah sprinkler heads are all some of them need to be checked yeah I think that's part of the problem with some of the flooding sometimes you gotta be on it and yeah. check the sprinkler heads and then uh, I think did we have uh, outlet issues because we wanted to start using some of the machines and cages but the outlet uh, that's all I got for the punch list on those fields. Um, I, I did notice um, I was in the cages at Willows last night before my game doing some hitting with the girls, and all the L screens were shot. So I don't know if that's going to be. You got a lot of zip ties on. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're mostly zip tie. <laughs> and I know um, you had mentioned maybe in the future, uh, I'm just trying to give you some ammunition. Um, maybe putting together a adult softball league. And I talked to you about field one and two at Farron, mm -hmm. maybe being a spot where you could do that because those are the two best fields there. If, they're, if, if that's something that you guys are thinking about, they need to be fixed up before you, you know, open that up to that scenario. Yeah. Um, and even from, um, I got some pictures from out there and um, had some talks about Farron just needing to be completely revamped. Right. Uh, we do a lot of willows and a lot of manpower over at willows. We don't have the same manpower at Farron on a day to day, but it needs to be addressed. It needs to be revamped and, and redressed. Um, so I know coming up this this closure season, a lot of um, just as far as the big stuff, trying to get them level back up, um, adding more, tilling them, claying them, um, doing all of that. That's going to get taken care of. The the day to day um, stuff right now, from what you're telling me. Um, I'll jump on that and make sure they're starting to, to get some of that stuff done. Um, pitching the mounds. Um, and these are things where, you know, yes, if you can do them right away, that's great, but it's more, you know, for next season. Yeah, for, sure. yeah. Yeah, for next season. Yeah, but the, well, definitely, definitely, like I said, during, after the season, the downtime, um, trying to get the issues with, with three resolved, I know it's a, it's probably more than just, just the clay, um, but at least, building it up and leveling it back up. I don't think it's been leveled in a while. Um, so that needs to be that needs to be done. Um, so that that's going to get taken care of um, during this next off period with it. Um, but I'll get the the cages taken care of and the um, turf cages, turf sprinklers and the um, the pitching mounts for right now outlets um, outlets. And one other thing, oh, there's a bunch of light bulbs out. On the lights themselves. Oh, on the actual field lights. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot. Yeah. Um, one thing that I just thought of while we were talking about this, I know um, baseball is talking about tournaments and stuff. We're going to have field closures at Willows. Um, as soon as you project those dates or you get those dates, if you don't already have them, 
we're going to need those to make sure our tournaments work, you know, with, with the amount of fields and how many fields we're going to have available. You know what I'm saying? If we, yeah. this, if we try to put on a tournament, obviously we want to get it before you do any field closure, like as quick as possible. Okay. So we can get in like two weeks so we can hit them two weekends with the different age groups. Let yeah. me um, let me know when your um, projection the projection of the the end of the season. Um, I know with all of the rain, you probably had some reschedules and pushing back a little bit, but no, oh man. Um, if you have the schedule, that's the schedule. That's, that's it. All right. Um, so I'll, I'll double check that check when the end of the season and start getting that prepared. Um, to at least let you know, so you can start planning those on. So we can fire off those dates yeah. and give you the sixty days as quick as we can. Yeah. So we can make that happen. Yeah, we'll make that work. Um, leads me to open mics. Oh. Those are the, um, like the little side, the little bullpen. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely have to, to to really get on those. Um, so yeah, I'll make sure that's um that's passed along to our our parks crew and um, the attention start getting paid to parents. Um, but I'm glad I'm glad you all brought it to my attention and and are bringing it up because you're out there every day. You're seeing it, um, seeing the issue. So I got a checklist, a laundry list, and um tomorrow I get it over to uh, my park superintendent and and start getting some changes done. I have a question on yes. that, so I know how to follow up or where to follow up. Because, not to beat a dead horse, however, I went back through my emails and found an email of I had sent these complaints two years ago. Actually, Ed, that email was to you and Amy McCarroll, mm. and and nothing changed. Same thing. I have a son and daughter that play. I have had I can't count how many nights in the last you know month that my daughter doesn't get to play, and he's out there playing. So being a female myself, I get a little fired up and upset. That I see this happening to my girls. So I want to know how do I follow up appropriately and with who to make sure that something happens. And, and my question is, is how long do I wait before I make noise with the village? That is the village. I, I know. Um, no, you're, you're right here, right here, right now. Um, like I said, you follow up, shoot me an email, a text, um, give me a call. Okay. Um, like I said, I... We're we're here right now. I honestly can't speak of of then, but I can speak of right now. Right. Um. And so well, we're gonna go in and we're gonna try to make this happen and, and get these issues resolved. Okay. Yeah. Um. And but I, like I said, if you um anything, if you're out there and there's there's something wrong or anything, um, take a picture, um, send it to me, shoot me a text, just kind of what's going on. Okay. Um. And that way I'll know too. A lot of times, uh, we have work orders. Things are supposed to be getting done. They might not be getting done. And, um, and we're expecting it. And so if they're not and you're out there and you see it, you let me know. We can follow up on that end as well. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, does anybody have anything else for open mic? You got any new thoughts? We need to get that position for Amy to get a new job. You know, they're all using. Then you got two that don't have. Yeah, he's trying to get us four machines so all four teams can practice with them. Can you work on that? See, because we have three machines. We have three black machines now. I know when we first brought them out, they were calibrated, 
and then it was so wet that they have they might need to be recalibrated now that it's not wet to make sure they you know right where they're supposed to go and Tony's pretty good at that well, they can, we can figure that out I'll get with each of them on a weekly basis figure out the practice schedule and you know each and have one field practice so it shouldn't be that difficult and okay. there's somebody that Karen has a key and t two or three of us are at the park at every single minute of every single day and everybody up here has a key to it. Okay. So we should be able to get whoever needs that black pitching machine a black pitching machine for their practice. Um, anybody got anything else? Dusty? No? Everybody out there good? Open mic. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to say congratulations. Awesome on the Cooper Sound ticket. I hope you get the other one because, I mean, it's going to put you, you're going to get a big draw from it. I mean, we tried for a long time. And it's awesome news. Hope it, like I said, I hope you get the other one too. Um, Thank you. I just decided um, when Scott came up here, I think this is just a suggestion. It might be a help if you send him the agenda. For a meeting, so he knows if he needs to add anything, all right, from the travel side or you know anything like that, or you know even maybe Jose too. He's a travel baseball guy, right? Yes, so he might have something. Or that way, they can at least email me. With, if they can't be here, they can shoot me with it, and I can read it out. Um, next, uh, baseball, t-ball. I got suckered in coaching t-ball with Kyle this year, <laughs> and uh, it's been bringing back lots of memories and. How much fun it is. Um, T-ball is fun. <laughs> the rules, the, the umpires don't know nothing about T-ball. Some of the ones we've had, they did, they're they're nice umpires. They've been, but I don't. Was there an umpires clinic this year? Um, oh, yes. But if you have issues, I've been dealing with Danny. Um, with umpires. Uh, if you have issues. Yeah, they just like we had Madison last weekend. She's nice and all, but. I know she has no idea what's going on. Yeah, because I brought up some of that too with Danny, yeah. and I told him I'm willing to go if I uh, if they have games, I can go to the games and kind of work with some of them. Well, next year when you do the clinic, I'll be more than happy to come to it. Well, and if you have issues with some of the umpires, you see, like, let us know and see yeah. if we can maybe we can get some adults there. One of us. I mean, some of the stuff is like, we got you know seven seven kids playing the infield. Uh, getting five, getting five swings on the tee. I mean, they're really they're not learning that way. Um, yeah, that, Tony, I know it's tee ball and all, but they still need to learn right and wrong. Tony had the same issue when yeah. he um, they try to get him to do five. Yeah, off the tee. Yeah, just uh, I think that's an acreage to bring that to. So <laughs> I, that was their triple A. I'm acreage guy. There's while we're, while we're on the subject, there's um when I came. On the board, that I had a little bit of an agenda. I had a list, and a lot of the things are coming, you know, coming to pass. But one of the things that I've discussed a few times with people is, and it, good idea, bad idea, whatever. It's just one thing that keeps popping back in my head. Um, bringing umpires back to our park. Um, like I said, don't know if it's a good idea. Don't know if it's a bad idea. I just remember that when umpires were at our park. We always had umpires, and if someone, because even when they weren't working, because they grew up here, umpiring here, and we were our own little entity, we always had it, someone that would step in and help out if someone didn't make it, and that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm still going to keep working for. I'm still looking for a person that would, you know, step up and help me get a core of umpires together and then teach the young kids, because if you remember, we had young kids that started off umpiring with T-ball, and six years later, they were umpiring in 15U, you know, and that was awesome because I saw them <laughs> moving up the umpire ladder, you know, and I, Absolutely. I just, I always feel like, Absolutely. I always feel like that I would love to get our own chief umpire and bring umpires back to our park because I can promise you that Gardens, Okahili, never have one umpire when they're supposed to have two. I can promise you that. 
because that's their home fields. That's where their umpires are out of. And that's what I want to do. I want to work towards getting our umpires back out of our park so we never have a shortage of umpires. And we're always training umpires coming up through the ranks. I don't know how everybody feels about that, but that's that's one of the top three on my you know, my agenda. But Ed, on that case, if you can get names, that way I can work with Danny and see so helps. Danny here. Yeah. If anybody was willing to step up and put, you know, well, that's all I got for. On that note, they're good. Um, we're only interleaguing with. In 12 you the girls are older. And I know my girls are getting tired of playing the same team over and over again. Um, this is a suggestion. It's it's just my opinion and what my families have always liked in the past. They don't mind going to Phipps one time a year. Um, we have three teams in 12 U. Um, I think we've played already. They're not. Kind of hardest, but. Keep in mind that teams over again. Um, travel things not as much as I think. I've been dealing with you know, like I said, I'm trying going to Phipps one time. So they had a great time. I that we I the acreage and I was told I don't know where it fell apart. Leaking with Phipps, Boynton and um and but that all through Jesse and she said there was scheduling issues and we had a lot of discussions about it several we will get it worked out though and our goal is to get the interleague back up and flowing like cool. it's supposed to so we can get the support that we need awesome um travel shed at Farron. is it possible to get that room over there is that room being used for machines or anything anymore no i think we can get it dedicated to just a travel team that can absolutely so be can dedicated just to travel Store, pitching machines, chalk. We can take that combo lock off and get a lock. We just make sure the village has a key and we'll be fine. All right, cool. And um, we have a game at Willow's Sunday at 10 a.m. Do you have chalk I can buy or, or I can use the line of field with Sunday morning? Sunday morning, do we have chalk? At Willow's? Yeah. Maybe yeah I'm pretty sure. Last I saw, yeah. I had a a couple Locked bags. Bag. <coughs> I just I just need to put two lines down, a circle, and like half a batter's box. Yeah, it won't be a problem. I think the machine is full right now, and yeah, there's a bag and a half. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. But we're about to. There, I'm, I'm about to make a run to that Winfield place, though. Yeah, you got it. My, my problem is we're only open during the week from like yeah. nine to four or something. <laughs> yeah, it was nice when I get off of work at two o'clock, so it was perfect. Yeah. For me to... That's um, awesome. All right, cool. That's all I got. Thank you. I'll make that uh, travel thing work this week, and I'll make sure all the travel coaches cool. have a piece of that in the village. Is it chalk in the Phil Five Shed, or is it in the? Okay. All right. Yeah, Thanks. there's a, there's at least an extra bag in there, and I think there's still one in the travel shed on field and, five. And the machine yeah. Should be full. 
it's if full I though. If it's full, it's there's probably not. Yeah, there's enough in there. Right. I think that you can get right. it done. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> That's it. You wanted me to come to a board meeting. <laughs> Scott's walking out. <laughs> I've got four teams playing Sunday um, over at Barron and around Robin for uh, Heave 16. And um, I spoke with Mike. Um, he's not here tonight. He said he would make sure that there was chalk over at Barron when okay. he gets the field sign. So, um, just we have a machine over there, right? Uh, he said there was a machine, but he didn't think there was any chalk there. So. Okay. I'll make sure that happens since he's not here. So, one, one thing you would do maybe uh, to after the talk. Whatever, I, I assume that there would be some fee for that. Um, yeah, that's what. Both, you know, I'm used to lining fields and other, other parts. Yeah, well, there. if we make that room this arc and have the machines and just come together as an improvised crowd, that might be something. Actually, that's probably the uh, travel softball coordinator that will take care of getting all that together and uh, getting the chalk and getting the money <laughs> from all the teams. <laughs> and your bill to date. Pass that forward to him. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else? Okay, um, if that's it, I want to uh, make the motion to close the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That's it. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys.